Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you and welcome to the Straits Times Smart Parenting Post-PSLE Forum. I'm Sandra Davey from the Straits Times and I'll be moderator for this morning session. With me here is Mrs Tan Chen Ki. She's MOE's Deputy Director General of Education and Director of Schools. This forum is today is aimed at helping parents understand the PSLE scoring system, which came into effect last year, and how it will be applied to secondary school postings. More secondary schools will be offering full subject-based spending next year. I think this is an important shift for secondary schools, and I hope parents will take this opportunity to understand what full subject-based base spending is all about. Mrs Tan, before we start our discussion, allow me to share some housekeeping matters with our audience, both online and in the studio. This session will be approximately 45 minutes. For those of you who have submitted your questions, we had quite a few, thank you. We will incorporate many of them in our discussion today. For those of you who may have questions later on, you can send them to us by clicking on the Q&A icon on your Zoom screen. To refresh your memory on the new scoring system and how be applied to school postings, we played a video recording just before the start of this session. For those of you who missed it, let me touch on some of the key changes so that you'll be able to follow this discussion. First, under the new scoring system, each standard level PSLE subject will be scored using eight bands known as achievement levels. Each pupil will be given AL scores from 1 to 8 for each subject. The new AL system of broader bands is meant to be less stressful than the old T-score system as pupils do not have to chase the last mark to outperform their peers. Now let me touch on the new posting system, in particular what happens when two students tie for a place. If two pupils with the same score vie for the last spot in a school, tiebreakers will come into play. The first tiebreaker will be based on citizenship, that means Singaporeans will get priority over Singapore PRs and international pupils. The next tiebreaker is the pupils' list of school choices, where a pupil puts the school higher on the list of choices will get priority. If the tie still cannot be broken, then computerised balloting will be used. Now, Mrs Tan, would you like to say a few words about the scoring system and the school selection and postings before I go into the many questions <laughs> I've got for you today? Okay. Well, very good morning to all who are present here, as well as those who are online. Um, a happy Saturday morning and it's my pleasure to join you this morning. Thank you. Um, before we begin uh, to answer the onslaught of uh, <laughs> questions, uh, maybe just let me give, give you a sense of some of the things that we've been observing and, and some updates with reference to the first batch of uh, P6 students last year that went through the, the revised mm -hmm. uh, PSLE scoring uh, as well as the, the new posting approaches. Um, as you've um, seen on the video, and I think Sandra also spoke about that, mm -hmm. um, this revised system is part of MOE's efforts systemically uh, to move away from an overemphasis on academic results. Um, and with the first batch having gone through it last year, uh, maybe let me just provide some updates with reference to what we observe uh, mm -hmm. from the first batch. And let me begin by saying and, and talking about what has not changed. Um, because it's a change in the scoring system as well as the posting system and not in the exams themselves, we noticed that actually the students' exam performance has remained consistent over the past number of years. Um, so that has not changed. Um, if you look at the, the, the results and the allocation of the students to the different, different courses, that has also remained consistent over uh, the past number of years. Um, I think last year, uh, parents would know that we have uh, we released a set of indicative cutoff points mm. um, because we simulated uh, from the past T-score and, and we provided parents with these. Right. And looking at, at the end of last year when we looked at the cutoff points, uh, these also have remained largely consistent with the indicative uh, cutoff points that we released. Schools that saw a little bit of fluctuation only saw a fluctuation of one point. 
okay. um, the, the percentage of students that are, have been posted to uh, schools within their first three choices also <laughs> remain consistent uh, and stable uh, at about 80%. I think this is what we've, we've spoken about already. Yeah. So that has not changed. Uh, and um, sometimes parents anticipate that the changes were like going to shake yeah. everything up. Yeah. And this was what they observed. But what has changed? Mm -hmm. And that was crucial and that was very heartening. Right. Um, because of the changed system, we actually observed that uh, there were a lot more schools mm -hmm. with the same cut-off points. Right. Uh, there were also a lot more students with uh, the same PSLE scores. Uh, and what this meant for the students last year was that they had a greater variety Mm -hmm. uh, of choices and also what this meant was that when they got their PSLE results um, it wasn't a, uh, uh, an exercise in comparison did you get 213, 214 you know because mm -hmm. they all uh, clustered within uh, groups of uh, PSLE scores right. uh, and we, we noticed that parents are also a lot more intentional Okay. in their choice of schools. Right, so because that's school choice mattered. Yes, because school choice For the tiebreakers. Yes. That's right. right. So, so that's, that's, that's the primary six cohort last year. Um, but also, like what was mentioned in the video and what, uh, Sandra, you mentioned as well, mm. in the secondary schools, um, since 2018, we yeah. started subject-based spending. Right. Uh, and that built on what we have already been doing in the primary schools. And when we started it, we, we really just wanted to empower our students to be able to say, when I step into secondary school, yeah. uh, it's, it's a level playing field right. and, and I can pursue subjects to my strengths. Mm -hmm. um, so students are able to actually pursue subjects uh, beyond uh, their, their course of study if uh, they, they exhibit strengths in those areas. And that has been happening in two, uh, since 2018. And building on the momentum that we've, we've seen, um, we then felt that it was, it was, uh, we were able to do full subject-based spending. Right. And that meant that uh, in the lower secondary, uh, what we are able to do is actually to organize our students into uh, mixed form classes where the students are able to interact with students of a diverse profile. Uh, and after a number of years with some of the pilot schools and schools in the earlier stages of implementation, we've seen very encouraging results. You know, students are able to interact, yes. uh, understand one another. Mm -hmm. And also with that subject-based spending component, they've been able to actually pursue individual subjects that they like. I mean, some like math, some like English. Yes, that's right. Uh, and, and if I like English, I want to do it to at the, a higher level. At a higher level. And, and, yeah. yeah, and they've been able to do yeah. it. So, so primary school, secondary school, we've made systemic shifts. Then, the, the, I mean, the parents, how to choose. Yeah. Uh, and, and therefore, what we want to be able to encourage parents to do is not just focus on the cut off points. Uh, that's the easiest, <laughs> uh, but that's the most dangerous. Um, know your child, know your schools, schools. Uh, look at the resources that we've provided. Uh, school Finder on the MOE website, My Skills Future portal, and understand what fits best for your child. And then look at the range and make your choice. So I'll stop here because. <laughs> sure, sure. We need Too to get on questions. to some of the questions. Uh, of course, uh, quite a few asked about full subject based bending mm -hmm. as well. Because as you know, uh, many secondary schools are going to offer that mm. from next year and then 2024, even more, right? Um, so, so let's go right into the questions that I've received from parents. Um, I'm, I'm using the question to shape uh, this discussion, as I said. Um, we had this last year as well, on moderation of marks and using the bell curve to moderate the marks. Um, I know MOE said, no, there's no moderation of marks, but obviously some parents still have questions and want further clarifications. Um, so most of them are asking, again, <laughs> is there moderation for the PSLE? Uh, especially if you see many students scoring in the very top band of A1. Uh, will MOE use the bell curve and adjust the marks? Okay, another question, this uh, was from a parent. Say, so given a yearly PSLE student population, a cohort of about 40,000, there are results for each subject will naturally fall into a bell curve, right? Mm -hmm. 
right? It's unbelievable. This parent says that MOE says <laughs> that the AL score is based purely on the marks they score. Can MOE confirm that the bell curve is still <laughs> used to determine the AL score awarded to students? Okay, <laughs> the infamous bell curve. <laughs> you must ring the death bell for the bell curve. <laughs> um, perhaps let me categorically state that the bell curve is not used for all national examinations, including the PSLE. From a statistical angle, um, of course, the, the performance of uh, every cohort would naturally fall along a, a, a normal distribution curve. Um, and, and that is natural and that, that surfaces as we observe uh, how the kids perform. Um, but do we actually then force fit the kids into a bell curve uh, and shift them within that? Let me say a very, very clear no, we do not. Um, what, what the students receive as their examination results would be a reflection of how they performed. And it is not how they performed relative to the next person. It's really a reflection of, of uh, what they have done uh, in the examinations. Uh, and also, let me assure parents that um, the way we design exams uh, is such that there is a certain percentage of the easier questions, mm. uh, the moderate questions, and the slightly more difficult questions. Uh, and as we do that, consistently over the years, it maintains the examination standard. So there's no major fluctuation year on year. And, and, and therefore, that's what we have. And if in a particular year, uh, students did very well for, for that particular examination, then you will see more students having better results. So there is no bell curve use. <laughs> well, is okay. this useful? Yes, I, I think it's important to clarify <laughs> that again. Uh, I think really the whole idea of the new scoring system is to allow students to do go as far as they can in certain subjects, show their strengths yes. in certain subjects. And if they did an A1, good for them. If more of them scored A1, then uh, good you know, for everyone concerned. Um, you mentioned the posting results mm. uh, last year, and you said that you know MOE had announced that eighty percent of PSLE students were posted to a secondary school of their top three, first three mm. choices. Can MOE say what proportion of students got into the first choice school? <laughs> uh, this is from a parent. Okay. He feels that uh, that will tell him something about the new. Uh, broader base uh, scoring system. Well, well, you said it. It's a broader base scoring system, and uh, the the reason why we made those changes is really to shift parents and students away from that infatuation with that top choice, uh, okay. and and hence we we would rather broaden the discussion into how many actually got into the top three. Uh, and this is where I want to encourage parents not to just uh, put all your eggs into that top choice basket. Mm. Mm. Um, because if uh, we are looking at schools that are now bunching in terms yeah. of their cutoff points, there's a lot more choice that, that is available. And I would advise parents to actually look at your, your series of choices in terms of what are my top three. And these top three mm. are the top three that uh, my child would not bind mm. entering into. And therefore, uh, I, would, I would shift the focus away from just that single choice. Right. OK. Um, again, on uh, cutoff scores uh, for schools last year, uh, you, you spoke about that as well. You said it remained largely similar to the simulated scores that MOE did uh, based on the 2020 results and posting data, right? So some parents want to know, do you expect this year's uh, cut-off scores to be similar to last year, largely remain stable, or do you expect shifts now that it's <laughs> one year on since the new scoring system? Uh, you know, maybe parents have kind of figured <laughs> it out a little bit more and uh, may make choices differently. Well, each year I get asked that question. Uh, I used to be a school principal and every year the parents would ask me, will your cutoff point change? And yeah. all that. It's really like a gaze into the crystal ball. Um, and, but if you look at the, the patterns across mm. the years, it has remained largely it's consistent. It's quite stable. Yeah. And stable. Um, so that's, that's what we expect. Of yeah. course, uh, barring major 
yeah. seismic shifts. shifts. Yeah. Um, but we expect it to be stable. So it's useful to look at last year's okay. range uh, right. and work alongside that uh, and, okay. and, and work with that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, about the IP schools, of course, they're very popular. Uh, and uh, as you know, the IP schools have cut off scores of between six and nine points yeah. last year. Um, some parents are asking, do you expect it to get more competitive <laughs> this year? And uh, what w advice would you give to parents who are considering IP schools for their kids? Mm. Once again, this is another crystal ball to gaze into. Would I ex am I expecting it to shift? Yeah. Um, I mean, over the years, it's remained consistent and, and we expect that that would be uh, the patterns that we see. Uh, it's just a shift over to the PSLE score rather than the T score. Um, but I, I would actually broaden this discussion into um, should everybody gun for the IP school? Mm. And it comes back really to understanding our children. Uh, and some children would thrive in an IP school context. And we've seen that. And uh, later, if you talk to principals of IP schools, you recognize that there are some students who really just enjoy the programs and what, what the IP schools offer. But some, school, some students actually would, would thrive mm. in a non-IP context, right. uh, when they work towards the O levels and where they are able to be provided with a, a slightly more structured program um, so my advice to parents really is don't just gun for the IP schools, gun for knowing your children. And from there, understand what their strengths are and then make that choice. Right. I, I agree. I have interviewed students before who uh, had the option of going to an IP school but chose to mm. go on the O-level track because they kind of felt that they needed exams to study, <laughs> to, to buckle down and study. And uh, they, they felt that they did better. Actually, they did better. In the o o level. And then at the same time, I've met IP students who kind of drifted, you know, because they're given quite a lot of independence. And then they are perhaps the sort who actually do better when there's a, a structure and there's, you know, uh, more examinations to, to kind of force them to study. <laughs> uh, so really, it, it takes knowing your kid That's and, right. you know, uh, and what, what their strengths are. Mm. Well, yeah. and also in schools, in the primary yeah. schools, we, we help the children also to understand themselves. Yeah, and, that's important. And to understand yeah. what their own strengths are. Yeah. Uh, so in education and career guidance in schools, yeah. in the primary schools, we help them to say, actually, I'm, I'm this type of learner, that right. type of learner. Right. And uh, so parents, listen to your children as well, right. uh, because that's, that's also crucial. Okay. Yeah. Um, there were five, quite a few questions on uh, direct school admissions. Mm -hmm. Um, in 2021, MOE said there were 31,400 applications through DSA for secondary places, secondary one places, which was up from 30,500 the previous year. Um, can I know, uh, can you reveal the figures on how many got in through DSA? So this was for last year. What about the DSA figures this year? Mm. How many applied? and how many were given offers? Mm. So, I mean, last year, 31,400 students, uh, there were uh, 31,400 applications, uh, yeah. from which there were 12,100 applicants yeah. that you mentioned. And of these, of course, 3,800 received mm. confirmed offers. Okay. So that was, uh, that was last year. Yeah. Uh, this year, we had a total of 31,800 applications. So there's a slight yeah. increase. Um, and about 12,200 unique applicants. Right. Um, and 3,900 uh, confirmed offers. Right. How many took up the, the places we, it remains to be seen? Right. Um, but because they have to accept the offer mm. and confirm it, right? Yes. After they get their and results. Then enter. And yeah. yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, so, so largely stable, we, we see it creeping up, yeah. um, which is not a bad thing. Yes. Um, because it's, it's part of uh, what MOE has been doing in terms of encouraging schools um, to offer the SA across right. the, the education landscape mm. and also in the primary schools to encourage parents to consider the SA. 
yeah. uh, and to, to consider DSA not just for a specific profile of schools, yeah. um, but across uh, schools that may be uh, quite suited for their children. So, so yeah. this trend and the creeping up is, is, a con is, is, a, is an encouraging one mm. and we want to be able to encourage it even further. Yeah, because you need to look beyond the academic That's achievements right. of your child, right? That's right. And look at what other strengths they have. Yes. yes. And, and I really do think that um, it's important to encourage these other strengths, and right. whether it's sports or you know the arts yeah. or creative writing. Yeah, exactly. Creative writing, <laughs> leadership skills. Yeah. You know, and you know, kids are really very talented. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Are. Exactly. Um, okay, on school choices. Um, Quite a few parents are asking, why has MOE made school choice count for more under this scheme? Can MOE say how many students last year got a place in their top two choice schools because of putting it down as their first or second choice? Uh, I bring, okay, so this parent said he brings this up because he feels that it's actually quite difficult for parents uh, and students to make these strategic choices uh, that will result in getting into their top choice schools, mm. their preferred schools. Ah, yeah. Okay. Well, what, like what <laughs> I mentioned earlier, uh, we want to shift parents away from an infatuation with just that top choice. Right, and to move away uh, into a, a broader scan of all the schools that could potentially develop their children to their fullest potential. Mm. And it may not be the school with the lowest cutoff point. Yeah. Um, so we encourage parents to be a lot more intentional. Uh, explore our School Finder web, uh, on, the, on the MOE website. It's actually very informative. So if you have not seen it, please, I'm making a pitch for my MOE colleagues uh, who are, are managing that. But beyond that, the schools are going to offer open houses. Right. Uh, and, and go sense the culture, talk to the students, talk to the teachers, listen to the principal um, and, and, and look at the programs. And some parents actually look at school choice in terms of that distance and the proximity from home, mm. which also makes a difference. Okay. Uh, and we therefore worked with school choice as also a tiebreaker because we want to encourage parents to do precisely what I just described. Mm. So that it's not just looking at you know, the whole uh, um, rank list of cutoff points and choose the top and say, let's go with it. Right. Uh, so the, it's, it's the intentionality that we want to encourage parents uh, to move into. Okay. Yeah. Be because I cover education uh, and I want to keep a uh, finger on the, the pulse of what concerns parents, uh, I, I was very encouraged last year at the conversations that were ongoing in some of these chat forums. Um, because choice counted as one of the tiebreakers, uh, I felt that a lot of parents were actually looking beyond. They were asking questions of, what is this school's, uh, this particular CCA like? Because my, my kid is interested in that. Uh, you know, uh, what about this uh, particular niche program that the school has? So I was quite encouraged by that That's because it was, uh, I thought it was less focused on the top schools <laughs> and getting into the top schools and how to game it mm -hmm. and, and more on, you know, does, does IP suit my child That's and so right. on. So I personally, as <laughs> someone who looks at education policies, feel that, you know, this uh, actually was a good move mm. on the part of MOE. And, and it forces parents, uh, I hope it forces parents <laughs> to think about uh, what are the strengths of my child? Uh, what are their weaknesses? Mm. Will they do better in a school like this or in, in, a, in a more competitive environment? There are some kids who thrive in, in competitive environments, good for them. But then there are other kids, you know, uh, they are a small fish in a big pond, you know. They, they, they actually may be very good, very strong, but, you know, because of the competition, uh, they, they don't thrive as well mm -hmm. in, yeah. in the stress, you know. So uh, it's, it's good for parents to really think about, as you said, you know, about their kids mm -hmm. and reflect on that. Um, okay, with regards to uh, uh, full subject-based bending, um, a couple of parents asked this question, what would your advice be with regards to choosing between two schools <laughs> with the same cutoff scores that their kids can uh, get into 
but with one offering the full subject-based bending. Basically, they want to know what are the benefits of uh, full subject-based bending. I know uh, from 2024, a lot more of the schools, uh, all the schools. Uh, will have, yeah, all the schools other than the IP schools, yes. the specialist schools, will be offering full subject-based bending. Sure. But I think this is a parent who's faced with this question for <laughs> next year. So this is uh, probably a P6 parent. <laughs> yes. Because for yes. the P5 parents, yeah. actually right. this would not be yeah. a relevant exactly. question. Exactly. So for the P6 parents, um, full subject-based bending school versus uh, a school that has not... Uh, no, not have yeah. uh, Well, we have 90 schools actually by next year uh, that will be offering uh, okay, that's the, quite a lot. That's, that's about yeah. two-thirds. Yeah. Um, so uh, you, you do have quite a variety to choose from. Uh, what are the perks and what are the differences in experience? Uh, one of the key things beyond uh, subject-based bending, which uh, all secondary schools uh, with the different streams would, uh, students in these schools would be able to experience. Um, what uh, the schools that are on full SBP, uh, have uh, done or will be doing is actually to organize the students into uh, mixed ability, mixed form classes across the various uh, streams. Um, so there, there will promise to be a diversity of uh, interactions, friendships formed, mm -hmm. um, because they will also uh, pursue a certain set of common curriculum subjects right. in these classes. Right. Uh, friendships formed, which are, which are precious, yeah. uh, and also to learn to understand across the different uh, school profiles, uh, student profiles. So that's, that's what the full subject-based bending schools uh, very, very explicitly offer. So it's not to say that mm. the non-full SBP schools do not offer this, these experiences, yeah. because that the students experience in the CCAs. Yeah, uh, but for full SBB schools, it's also in the organisation of the form classes. Okay, uh, and having done it for a couple of years, yeah. for some of the schools, the, the the outcomes are very encouraging. Yeah, the kids love it. Uh, yes, yes, they they love it. Yeah, uh, and uh, there's a lot of insights with reference to hey, uh, I've 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 just enjoyed making yeah. uh, different friends of, mm. of uh, different profiles, and then appreciating uh, one another. Mm. And if you talk about kids after. Well, yeah. you just put them together. Yeah. Uh, they will complain about the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, same lessons being boring. Yeah. Or same ex lessons being exciting. So, so that's what we want to be able to uh, nurture in the, in the children. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, again, with regards to choosing schools, uh, some parents have asked, as an educator, what would your advice be uh, on how to make a strategic choice when it comes to listing these six school choices, right? Um, for example, should a student even consider a school that maybe may have a cutoff score just slightly above his aggregate score? Um, and then, or is it safer to stick, uh, ensure that all the six schools are well below the, uh, the, the entry score, the, uh, the aggregate score that your child has scored? You use the word strategic. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's the word that the parent used. Oh, <laughs> well, strategic is a good word. And we want to teach our kids yeah. to be strategic as well. Um, so, so how, how do you approach this? What what is the ideal strategy? How how is there a step by step? I, I mean, if you ask me as an educator, uh, once the results are out, yeah. what I would do, and uh, actually you can do, now, do it now already, uh, check out, uh, I'm making the pitch for the school finder again, mm. but, but check out last year's uh, cutoff points and the range. Okay. Um, and when the PSLE results are out, look at the, uh, the, the group of schools that uh, have cutoff points of slightly higher. Um, because like what I mentioned earlier, there are some schools that experience a little bit of fluctuation mm -hmm. uh, and the fluctuation was in, uh, in terms of one point. Okay. Right. So, so it is right. a possibility that yeah. the cutoff point might, might, yeah. might go, go lower or go higher. Uh, so look at three baskets. Right? Mm. One basket slightly higher, one basket of course uh, aligned, one basket okay. slightly lower. Okay. Identify a few schools and check out the schools. Right. So don't just make decisions based on cutoff points. Yeah. Check out the schools, look at the yeah. school website, mm. um, talk to students who've been from the school, uh, and make a beeline for the open house sign-ups if they need sign-ups. Yeah. Uh, I think it's published, either already published or it will be published on the MOE website. Uh, and 
go for the open houses. Mm. Because while we look at the strategic mm. uh, placement from the point of reference of cutoff point, you also want to then say, these are my three baskets, but which would fit my child more? Okay. Uh, the culture of which schools uh, fit best for my child's personality. And then from these three baskets, make that choice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, there are a couple more questions, but I want to open up uh, the questions to the parents here today and, and as well as parents online. Uh, I'll give those here uh, <laughs> a minute or two to think about what you want to ask her. But um, let me go with... Uh, a parent who sent in a question uh, says, my son says he's more stressed by the new system that losing just one mark will make him drop one AL band. What do you have to say to that? I would say, please encourage your son. You know, I, ultimately, what we want to be able to see is not to impose that kind of a stress on our children, but to broaden it. And when you broaden it, you begin to recognise that uh, e even if there is that drop of that one AL, AL band, if you total the four subjects uh, into that PSLE score, and you look at the range of schools that are clustering uh, along a whole range of uh, cut-off points, um, okay. the, the stakes are not that high. Mm. Uh, and, and when you broaden a perspective and you take a holistic approach um, towards a PSLE, uh, the assessment as well as the results, then that, that stress is relieved. Um, and I also want to encourage parents to encourage the kids to enjoy the learning. Try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and not stress so much about... Yes, one, one mark. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, a parent asked, uh, other than, of course, understanding your kids' strengths, uh, when you go for open houses, what questions can parents ask to understand better which schools are suited for their child? Mm -hmm. so, so let me just give you a snapshot of uh, what schools would typically do um, in open houses. Uh, first of all, there's the principal's talk. Uh, good to attend that because you, you get a sense of the tone from the way the principal speaks about the school and, and the areas of emphasis. Uh, and ask yourself, are you comfortable with the areas of emphasis? Uh, so that's the first one. Uh, and, and, and then schools would also have um, school tours. Uh, they would probably showcase their school's distinctive programs. So it could be their applied learning programs or their mm. Learn for Life programs, ALP, LLP. Uh, they sometimes would showcase the different pedagogical approaches that they take to the mm. teaching of uh, different subjects. Mm -hmm. uh, those that have been on board the full SBB journey might also showcase uh, the different things that the, the students experience in full SBB or the mixed curriculum, uh, the, the, the combined curriculum classes. Uh, and typically, uh, they would use, not use, they would engage their students, their student mm. leaders to be the group yeah. leads. Yeah. Talk to these students. Yeah. Talk to these students because you get the lowdown of what's actually yeah. happening in the school. Yeah. Get a sense, you know, talk to the, talk to the they students. They can be quite frank, right? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> then all the left-hand columns would come out. Yeah. You then get a sense of whether you, you feel that this school's culture fits. Right. Uh, and, and you have to be there in person. Yeah. When you're there in person and, and you sense the, whether there's vibrancy or whether there's, uh, you feel that this school has uh, quite a bit of pressure mm. or it's, it's, it's too vibrant for your introverted child. Uh, so, so it's a whole variety of things, but uh, the key really is I would listen to the principal, talk to the students, mm. and uh, if there are lesson demonstrations, attend those and engage with the teachers. Okay. Yeah. What about um, parent support groups? Because mm. I, I think they are a good source of information, right? Yes. Uh, can you get access to the parent support groups in schools? Some, some are they usually there? <laughs> <laughs> some, some schools do deck out, okay, deck out yeah. <laughs> their parent yeah. support group uh, mm. uh, parents to actually have a booth. Okay. or have, have some interaction. Right. I mean, when I was principal during the open house, right. actually I had a special uh, booth where okay. the parents can actually also answer questions yeah. from prospective parents. Right. And, and, and that is also useful. Okay. Okay. What about questions from uh, the parents who are here? Would anyone like to ask 
Um, Mr. Stan, uh, a question? <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Hi. Oh, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Uh, thank you for organizing this and thank you, Mrs. Tan, for sharing so candidly. Um, quick anecdote, then I have a question. Uh, the anecdote is this, I feel that subject-based bending works. Uh, I have a friend whose daughter went into a normal academic stream secondary school, but she was allowed to take literature at the express level. And as a result, she did very well there. Uh, turned out valedictorian of her class, uh, for her cohort actually, and she really enjoyed that. So I think that's a good success story uh, that you guys can add to your resume. Um, in line with that, right? So my question is this, um, judging from what we've heard so far, what you've been sharing, what MOE has been trying to do, right. I feel that what MOE is really trying to do is to kind of reframe ideas of what success looks like for each child uh, and how it's different actually for each unique child. So with that in mind, do you think uh, there should be a greater emphasis on career guidance or career exploration in schools? And if so, are our teachers actually well equipped to provide that sort of support to parents and to students as well? Yep. Okay. I agree. Well, <laughs> uh, I mean, I know that uh, education and career counselling has really been stepped up in schools, but perhaps you want to answer the question. Uh, okay, it, I mean, it's a, great, it's a great question. And thank you for the encouragement uh, that uh, subject-based spending and full subject-based spending eventually is the good and, and the, the right direction uh, to work towards. Um, but uh, your question is about uh, more education and career guidance. Thank you for also affirming that uh, this is something that we have um, been doing and we've been strengthening a lot more mm. over the past couple of years. Uh, we have um, actually education and career guidance counsellors situated, uh, in, situated in the schools and they provide the, the what we call ECG, education and career guidance, the ECG counselling for the students. Equipping the teachers is also very crucial and uh, thank you for, for that, that suggestion because that is also something that we've been working on quite a bit. Uh, we've been equipping teachers with the resources uh, and also the understanding of uh, the world of work um, and also the post-secondary educational institutions and the, the range of options that are there so that they can better counsel and, and work with uh, their students. Um, if you would recall, uh, Minister Chan also announced that uh, we have uh, very actively been uh, encouraging teachers to go on teacher work attachment. Yes, uh, and that one of the intents of that is to bring our teachers out uh, to be exposed to the variety uh, of uh, different areas of work, uh, and it's not just the jobs that that uh, we want that exposure to. It's actually what is it that employers want, and what does it mean to what survive in the twenty yeah. first century workplace? Yeah. Does that PSLE score? count <laughs> to whether or not you will thrive uh, as a worker 12, 10, 15 years later. And then for teachers, uh, and that, uh, for teachers to be able to actually recognise that it's not just the results. Actually, the results just, just are there. It's the skills. It's the dispositions. It's whether you can work as a team. It's whether you can communicate across. Uh, and these are what we call 21st century competencies. Uh, and we are very actively encouraging the teachers to, to uh, have a stint in the teacher work attachment uh, programs that are there. And they come back and they, they, they let their students know, they guide their students, and also they engage parents. Mm. Um, because parents, while themselves are working and professionals, sometimes have a different frame of mind when, when it comes to the children. Um, but it's, it's being when you hear from teachers and from employers about what's really crucial, uh, there's a different mindset that we wanna, want everybody to shift to. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so are there, thank you for that question. I, I do agree that um, education is very much a discovery process for kids and about, to discover more about themselves. and. Uh, it's, it's great that we have teachers who are trained in education and career counselling. And she mentioned teachers going in attachment. We've had two in the newsroom so far. We've got one right now. And uh, she's basically shadowing uh, journalists uh, who go out to cover events, perhaps, and, and trying to understand, uh, yeah, basically what is it that journalists do in case they have kids who are interested. I hope there are. <laughs> uh, we need future journalists, uh, you know, who want to come and 
be journalists or you know, do the many things that my colleagues and I do here. Yeah. Um, yes, we have another parent. Um, I have a question, um, but before that, I really like the the tips around, uh, you know, selections of schools as well as I think uh, the tiebreaker. And, uh, you know, some parents do select school based on distance and some based on CCAs and whatnot. Um, I do want to bring, I do want to further that topic a little bit and bring a little bit of focus, um, especially to special educational needs. I think there are parents with kids that may have special education needs. Um, do you have any tips, any advice on how do you go about navigating uh, the selection of secondary schools? Schools, uh, for this group of parents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Tan? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there are some specific secondary schools that are uniquely prepared to, to support students with special educational needs. But broadly, uh, we have equipped all schools with teachers trained in special educational needs. So uh, that's, that's the uh, baseline layer. Uh, but what I want to do is actually encourage parents with children with, uh, with some of these, uh, these needs to attend the open houses. Attend the open houses, get a sense, uh, ask the students, ask the teachers, ask the principal with reference to what are some of the school-based programs that, that, that support uh, students with SEN uh, and get a sense of the culture get a sense of how inclusive it is. Uh, what we, we, we want to be able to do is really for all schools to have a caring and enabling environment, to have an inclusive environment. And with the revised character and citizenship education curriculum, uh, what we very intentionally do is uh, that we want the kids to develop a sense of empathy across. Mm -hmm. uh, and what, what we, we build into the curriculum is a sense of understanding and also peer support. Uh, and all of these things are, are, are built in uh, and I would encourage parents to then, then look and go for the open houses of the schools, get a sense whether this is something that the school truly champions and believes in. Uh, and if this is something that you have a good vibe about, uh, then work with uh, this group of schools. We equip all, but some, you know, it's, it's, it's a matching. And yeah. uh, kids with uh, SEN, it's a whole variety. Yes. And each one is precious. Yeah. And, and we want yeah. to be able to say, is my precious one suited for this environment? Okay, yeah. right. Um, yeah, uh, I've been to schools uh, which take in kids with uh, special needs and uh, I've seen how it benefits the other kids, yeah. you know, because um, they actually get to see kids, you know, with different needs and uh, they, they make very good mm. friendships, they, they build friendships. Mm across you know it doesn't matter to them you know right. it's okay if you uh you know if you have a particular need you know mm. uh, but you know a great friend to me and they come alongside and they yeah exactly, exactly and they support exactly yeah. yeah so that's wonderful to see i think we're 40 minutes into the session already oh, we, so fast we, yeah oh. you have one question can we take a very quick question <laughs> final question and i promise okay. to answer go quick. ahead <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mrs. San, for today's insight. Um, I have a quick one. Uh, as uh, you said that uh, we should be uh, not targeting only at the top schools, yeah. and we should shift our uh, you know target. Now there are some parents which have the dilemma that if if you if they are not targeting for those, then probably their kids will be tagged as not so good if they have choices. So how do we change this thought process? Well. This, this is a million dollar question. <laughs> yes. Because it's a whole of society shift that we need to be able to see. MOE has made the first move. Uh, we've broadened the, the conversations. We have made systemic shifts and it signals our commitment to say, let's move our definitions of success beyond just whether you go to a, a, a top school or the school with the lowest cutoff point uh, and all of that. And let's, let's shift the conversations into what is, what is your child's strength? What is your child's interest? And, and broaden it. Broaden it with, with, uh, with BSA. It's also mm. a signal to encourage yeah. parents to say, it's not just the academics. Right. Are there unique strengths, like creative writing? Right. Uh, some schools actually take in BSA for journalism. Yeah, <laughs> or, yeah. Or, uh, that's right. Yeah, or yeah. the like, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and really very actively, from MOE's angle, that's the shift that we've made. In schools, of course, we, we see those shifts uh, and we, we will continue to work with the teachers to move those conversations when they engage with parents. Then we do also need to trouble parents to believe us 
trust us. <laughs> we have the best interests of the kids in mind and we really want to develop our students to their fullest potential. And that potential is not only in the academic front. And if you look at what's the world of work like uh, and what it's going to be like, it is not just the results or it's not just whether or not you attend the top school. Mm. Right? It's the kind of character that your children um, grow up to, to have and to, to exhibit. It's, it's the kind of dispositions, it's the kind of 21st century competencies. Uh, and these are things that all schools are committed to, to equipping our kids with. Uh, and these are, these are conversations that need to be ongoing. And sessions like these are very useful. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Mrs. Tan, uh, for all your great nuggets of <laughs> advice. Uh, I just want to tell parents, I went to see that girls and it was because I was an athlete and I went for the athletics program and there was a coach there, uh, I was a sprinter and there was a coach there who uh, inspired me and who was a very good coach and that was the reason why I went there and I still think I'm the person that I am today or the skills I've developed has been mostly through my CCA you know, uh, to competing in athletics. Yeah, so to me, it was very important for my development. So don't, don't forget these other things and really, I mean, the academics you take care of itself, you know, uh, and we all will try hard at it, but these other things really matter, yeah? Um, so thanks to our audience here and online for joining us this morning. I hope this session has been useful in helping you understand the new scoring system and uh, school postings. Uh, more importantly, I really hope it will help parents make uh, more informed decisions in schools uh, that will suit their child. Um, if you have friends who have missed this discussion, let them know that the coverage of this event will be found in tomorrow's Sunday Times. A recording of this discussion will also be available later on on the Straits Times website. Uh, do subscribe to the Straits Times Smart Parenting e-newsletter. Uh, this goes out every Sunday evening and I curate the content because we all have so little time, right? So I curate the content and tell parents if you have only 10 minutes, read this or watch this video because it's really important and significant. So it's also where parents get advance notice on talks, workshops, webinars like this. Uh, and then if you're a subscriber to The Straits Times, look out for more events like this being planned for you. Uh, and including on preparing for the PSLE next year. Uh, so. Uh, look out for the, the, the information on that. If you're not an ST subscriber, well, what are you waiting for? <laughs> yeah, uh, go to, uh, uh, we'll start the segment of, uh, in a moment, we will start segment two of today's program. Do click on the links that have been sent to you uh, to join the respective uh, breakout sessions with principals of various secondary schools. Uh, thank you everyone for your support. Stay safe, stay happy.